guys, it's Jeff. Welcome back. Uh, today I want to have a look at uh, my cook kit. Uh, this is a cook kit that I've assembled from various uh, various sources, uh, from online kit right down to your thrift store finds that just happen to work. Let's, uh, let's break it down and I'll show you what's in my cook kit. Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Let's have a look at what's inside this this kit this could be a day hike kit this could be a an extended uh, kit that you might take on extended leave canoe camping etc one of the things I don't like and I rarely bring is a full set of cutlery you can do away with all of this uh, and if nothing else just had a spoon with a longer handle that's more than enough this is extra weight I wouldn't normally bring all that with me uh, but I, I've just incorporated it into this kit for now okay so originally this uh, primary part of the kit was a Primos uh, Primus kit and I'll show what that entailed this is a uh, kind of a little mini frying pan for sure and it has the pinch pinch grip handles on there that lock into place that's a real bonus and it actually doubles as a lid there's a there's a fit if I've ever seen one right there there we go and there's the Primos cup or pot and this would work like this over top act as a lid there's a little little mouth on there if you wanted to pour and if nothing else it would be a really oversized coffee coffee cup this is uh, another um, a thrift store find, and you could saw you saw how, how snug that fit is inside and over top of that pot. This is a stainless pot. It would be ideal for bowling, uh, boiling. I think I it was originally a uh, just a decorative container to hold uh, utensils. What I did with this was uh, I drilled two holes in the side and you've seen these before these uh, <laughs> I've seen them as fish mouth spreaders for fishing um, or you can have uh, you can get them as a pot bale but this is uh, I think originally that that's what they were fish mouth spreaders but those two hooks in the end they fit, fit right down through those holes in the side and now I can suspend it over over the fire and then it quite easily can, can pour out of it if I needed to. Alternatively, this was an old handle. It looks like it came off uh, an old frying pan or a pot. Um, it's one of those things you hang on to things long enough and you find a purpose for it. I noted that this had a little kind of tab on here and on the mouth of the pot here had a nice lip so I ground open a little kind of hole in the side of that lip and now this pot handle fits right up in there like that so there is a secondary pot for water and uh, and or a coffee cup and it's already just doubled my capacity and uh, because they fit together uh, it really makes that ideal combo. All right, 
right. Now for cooking, this is an Esbit kit, Esbit burner. It has the swing out arms as well. Now inside I have all my additional fire lighting equipment. This Esbit stove uses these Esbit tabs as a fuel, like a hard fuel pellet. And I pack it, I, I store the, the burner inside this uh, bag um, and then I put it on top of a piece of cardboard down inside my pot so it doesn't scratch and rattle around inside my pot. So there is a uh, another cup system and that uh, has the gradations on the side and the pour spout and that fits right on top of the, uh, the, the stove itself. Now these are fuel tabs. They're a little different than what's originally designed for this but they would sit down inside that depression or you could feed it through the front um, as though it were a twig stove. With these pellets, you scratch up the surface, loosen up that powder, and then it'll light with the lighter or take a spark. This is one example. This is a ceramic, this is an antique kind of a ceramic uh, knob and tube fitting from electrical back in the olden days and here's my uh, flint and steel or the ferro rod. I also keep a lighter in there, some jute twine, I can fluff that up and that takes a spark very easily but more often than not the tabs will light on their own. While we're on the topic of strikers, this is my main striker with my logo on it and it works very well. Additionally to that, some of you can get these these strikers in the hardware store, department store, with the striker on the side. And now this is a magnesium block. This block is designed to be scraped. It is not designed just to be used as a handle. You scrape down filings. put them in a bundle, okay, a considerable number, some considerable pile of filings, and then from the back side you use the striker to light those filings and they take the spark and light very hot. Another extension of using the file blade here is to get one of the kind of bimetal, metal wood sawzall blades, it already has a hole in there and that really doubles as a great striker large for kind of kind of big hands and again you would take it off this lanyard to hold separately and then you can really uh, kind of use it properly and it doubles as a small saw in your kit if you were ever doing some small fine uh, trigger work with uh, snares or whatnot so we definitely have some options here Okay, and all of this came out of that one container. And that's what I encourage you to do is maximize the space that you have in any particular container to take on a trip if necessary. One other idea that I'm going to try is with this opened up, sometimes like on a windy day today, uh, the wind can kind of cause havoc with your tab and keep it lit. This is one of those extendable exhaust, you know, dryer vent exhaust. And they're they're very durable. I've actually held it to a held it to a lighter and hasn't hasn't caught fire. 
one has a collapsible windscreen. I thought this was a perfect, perfect fit down over the outside. And then just and then just drop it beneath the top ring so you don't uh, so it you still provides some air into your flame and then this fits over on top. So that is a portable windscreen for an Esbit stove. It's a perfect size. That's your just common dryer dryer duct uh, extension, and um, it does tolerate quite a bit of heat. And it's uh, very, very cheap and effective. And because it's meant to flex and corrugate multiple times, it's uh, even though it's tin foil in, in terms of texture, uh, it stands up to the the repeated flexion. Uh, and unlike tin foil that would just collapse and pinch on itself, and you wouldn't be able to use it uh, too often. So that was a that was a pretty neat addition. Let's see if we can get all this back together now. So we put my stove, after it's cooled off, back in its bag. The bag's not necessary, but I like to do that. It goes down inside the main pot. Carry a number of fuel, fuel tabs together. That's what this container's for. Keep them dry. That can fit down in there like so. You could go with a smaller lighter if you wanted to use a lighter. Not everybody uses one. Ferro rod. And here's another fire starter. You just kind of scrape this up. And it's wax impregnated cardboard, and that also doubles as a great little fire starter. That's everything for inside the kit. That fits right around, right around the bottom. This whole kit nests down inside the Primos container. I also have a little sponge for cleaning up ap afterwards. There's our lid for frying pan. We'll close up our spreaders or our bail. Take our handle off our pot. This is a very Air, almost airtight. In fact, I have my I'll put this inside our bag, and that just prevents the scratching of the uh, the inner coating off uh, off your pots. We can drop that down in there. Drop that in there. There goes our sponge, our lid, and there you have it. It's back inside the Primos bag. And again, with the handle. The bale is optional. Uh, the handle can just drop inside. I like to cover this up. Uh, I need to find something to cover this up. Maybe round these corners off so it doesn't puncture the bag. Maybe I'll do that. Your fire steels, that can go back in your kit, back in your pouch, and obviously any number of official cutlery, that can be optional. Quite often I'm using, uh, if not a spoon, just chopsticks that I make in the, in the, uh, on the trail. That's uh, that's everything. The only other thing I would add to this kit is perhaps a little bit of soap, and you'd have soap for washing up your uh, your dishes. Well, guys, thanks for watching. This is just one sample of a kit that you can assemble from purchased and/or thrift store finds. 
assemble it, modify it, make it your own, make it unique, and make it definitely work for you. Down below is my logo. Please hit that logo, and uh, that'll subscribe you to my channel for more, more great videos and grow, great content. Up top, that is a video that uh, I've chosen that might appeal to you. I encourage you to check that out. Until next time, Jeff off the gridiron. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your outdoors.